Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman, and our next guest needs no introduction, but he'll get one anyways. Mark Z, President of Mark Z Legal Staffing. Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. Thanks, John. As always, it's a lot of fun to be on the show and uh, to be talking about relevant subjects uh, in the business and employment world. Absolutely. And as always, you're bringing us a Mark Z moment. And today uh, you want to talk about something that is certainly timely and topical, uh, the use of AI, artificial intelligence. So right. what I, I thought um, when you and I were talking about um, subjects that are going to be continually big and bigger and even have a larger scope in the new year, I thought artificial intelligence is something we want to talk about. Um, they just finished, as you know, um, in Hollywood, a lot of the negotiations um, for the unions, and one of them had to do with artificial intelligence. And then you have another situation. We have lawyers who are starting to use artificial intelligence, and um, there's some concerns because, for example, I mean, businesses are doing that too. But for example, with, with attorneys, they're using artificial intelligence and they're not checking their work. So for example, some of the work from artificial intelligence is not correct. Secondly, um, as- that, that, That's amazing to me. Uh, you know, it just speaks to, and I hate to, to just throw the term out there, laziness. I, you know, it, instead of sitting down and drafting something that takes you an hour to draft, it took you 45 seconds to, you know, do a, a search on a platform, I won't mention any, and then you couldn't take the time to spend the 10 minutes to read it to make sure it was accurate. Um, Even what worse that than that, what I'm talking about, filing briefs, citing, okay. you know, citings of cases. Um, but, there's but not just one example, somebody... but there's multiple examples of that. But right. one of the interesting things that's going to affect the employment area in our space, when we have candidates who are under consideration, a lot of our, our clients and employers would like writing samples. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting is a lot of times when we're working on associate candidates, um, the writing samples that they're submitting are writing samples that are in the public domain that have been filed with the court, but they don't have their signature on it. But they've really written it. The supervising attorney has uh, has overlooked it, making sure everything is is fine, and then and then um, files it. Um, that's one thing, and you can say, look, this is a writing sample. It wasn't. It, it doesn't have my signature on it, but it's what I wrote. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's the subject that's perfect for um, this type of job. And this is, this is my, um, this, but this is my work product. When you're talking about the use of artificial intelligence, you have some candidates or some um, individuals who are applying for positions that are using writing samples that might not be theirs. They might say, oh, well, they use, I've used artificial intelligence and I made some additions and subtractions, but that changed the tones, tone of their, their, um, their writing. Their writing might not be the way they normally write. Also, what's interesting is with artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence can do a different writing style. Sure. So it's not just one style, it can adapt to other styles. So that's a concern that um, that firms and they invest a lot of money in companies in candidates that um, they've got to they've got to worry about is this really the work product of this person and have it verified. I'm curious about something. Have you you know you said that people may say that they used artificial intelligence. Have you actually had somebody disclose that in an interview? Um, and and the reason I ask is does that become a red flag? Uh, if somebody says, you know, they used artificial intelligence to draft something. Um, so, you know, do, 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 does the admission of it go even deeper down to, you know, not telling the truth now in, in, in a uh, interview process? Great question. We have no, we've never had anybody disclose that they've used artificial intelligence for their writing sample. We've had people tell us on a regular basis they've used artificial intelligence um, that's helped them when they're um, trying to Research get going something. on their writing, their memos mm -hmm. to the firms, um, um, trying to maybe do some initial research, which is more than fine, which is great to have. But what's what's concerning to 
a lot of employers that are people are starting to talk about it is, is this the writing sample of the person I am potentially hiring? So what I'm saying, if you're a candidate, if you want to look at writing samples of artificial intelligence, like one thing, like, for example, one of the things that are being used of a lot are job descriptions. It's, mm -hmm. it's much easier and it saves so much time for employers to use artificial intelligence to create a job description. They know what they want. It's not a it's not a creative writing um, exercise or, yeah. or exercise. Yeah. It's a um, actual it's, it's, it's information on a, on a role that you actually want to have information that's definitely in that's required legally. So that's really helpful in marketing of companies and firms and organization. Artificial intelligence is really helpful to get the process started. But if you're hiring an attorney or you're hiring an executive or you're hiring um, a paralegal or if you're, you're hiring um, a mid-level manager who's going to do a lot of writing or even like, for example, a grant writer, you're going to need um, um, like also, for example, immigration attorneys. If persuasive writing is really important. So you want to make sure that the person of your hiring has the proper writing skills, has the, pri the proper writing creativity and the, um, the writing style that is theirs, not somebody so, else's. So, you know, it certainly seems to be one of the uh, major concerns today. And, you know, we see it all in, in the media and, um, you know, clickbait that's on the Internet. Um, there's so much out there that becomes compelling, you know, based on a headline or compelling based on a topic. Um, and you read it and, uh, you know, I, I think many people take it as gospel, that it's factual, that it's accurate, that it's, you know, et cetera. So um, I, I would imagine that's going on when people are reading applicant, you know, uh, candidate uh, applications and uh, as well. Um, but I guess the, the old adage stand true here if it sounds too good to be true it probably is um not true in some capacity uh or uh you know does that cause you guys to dig a little bit deeper and look for inconsistencies um and and look and say huh this is funny this style isn't anything like the style in these other four documents that they submitted uh there's an inconsistency here so it becomes you know a line of questioning to go down right i think you just have to dig deeper you can't take things for granted like you've done before. So for example, it's like you, we've talked about it on the show before, reference checking. Reference checking is not the same that it used to be. And um, we've had situations recently where employers have given us references of candidates that are just totally not true. And that's why what a lot of employers do is they just confirm dates, they confirm responsibilities, in the job description, if you're not going to give a reference, an accurate reference, or you feel that the person that you're giving the reference to is not an appropriate reference, then don't give the reference. But if you're going to give a reference, if you're going to provide a writing sample, you got to provide something that's accurate. Otherwise, it's got to be verified in another way. And you're right, like everything else, it's got to be, um, it's got to be verified even more. And more work is part of the process. And, and the flip side is absolutely true as well. I, I, I see all the time, um, you know, firms, organizations go through extensive vetting processes of candidates. And then it comes time to uh, look at their references and they're like, ah, we don't need to check the references <laughs> right, right. Um, or, or, you know, don't really dig deep into uh, what the references are asking or, or, or telling. Um, and I would also say be prepared uh, as a as a as a screener um, to be asking certain questions that may evoke you know situations or examples that you can dig deeper on on the references so it's not a yes or no answer to to the questions right uh, it's and it's it's and sometimes it's it's not what's said it's what's not said you know and the absolutely. same thing in the writing you want to find out where the writing came from if, if it was filed in court, that's the other thing. 
is um, when you're filing legal documents with the court, they've got to make sure those documents are accurate. And the same thing with your writing sample, that's you know a motion, a pleading, or if you're you have a board meeting and you have something that's going to be written, you obviously and it's going to be have to be written creatively or grant writing, something that's going to be accurate and written by the person in the way you want written. It's it's really fascinating. One more thing to worry about in life. Uh, you know, the advent of artificial intelligence is great as the potential is. There's also a lot of risk associated with it. So uh, heeding the advice as always, uh, you know, go deeper than the surface, uh, ask the questions, verify, uh, trust but verify and, and uh, make sure that you uh, uncover uh, the truth along the way. Um, Mark Z, uh, Mark Zwetchenbaum, president of Mark Z Legal. This has been a Mark Z moment. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, talk a little bit more about their recruiting needs, uh, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? John, first of all, Google Mark Z, M-A-R-C in the letter Z, and we'll come up. Our wonderful Radio Entrepreneurs website, radioentrepreneurs.com, markzlegal.com, M-A-R-C-Z-L-E-G-A-L.com, and 617 617- Three three eight one three hundred. Thank you very much, Mark. This has been a Mark Z moment on Radio Entrepreneurs. And as always, we will be right back with another segment on Radio Entrepreneurs.